Every hitter that comes to the plate has a different, unique type of batting stance. You got to do something while the pitcher gets ready to throw the ball. A stance is just a starting point. Jeter the hitter, and ball one. We used to play a lot of wiffle ball in our backyard. We used to imitate guys. Hey, look, man, I played Will Clark in the backyard and wiffle ball, you know? It's like, oh, geez. Yeah. I drive. <laughs> The most important thing for any hitter is to find that unique comfort zone. Early on, getting an athletic position, you know, feet shorter width apart. I like to get my hands a little higher, try to keep them above the ball. A timing mechanism was to give you some kind of rhythm before you got ready to start your swing. My thing was a little bit of a shake of the rear end. I call it dancing with the pitcher. Frank Robinson used to talk to me about, he had a hitch. Joe was real simple. I started wiggling my fingers to remind myself, okay, let's start out at least with some loose hands. I was one of those guys who had a leg kick as well. Very difficult to go from a dead standstill. You're able to generate more power and more bat speed. Swing and a drive. And that whole rocking motion was me timing the pitcher. If you're a boxer, you're not going to hit from a dead standstill. You're going to get a little something behind it. He buried it way back out of here. There's a lot of haters that hit very funny. Some guys stand open, some guys stand closed. Do you remember Mickey Tittleton? He was just laid back there like this. Oh, that's Julio Franco. Oh, that's the guy that hit like that? There was a Dominican guy, his last name is Batista. He's almost looking through the bat. Something like, and, and that, that's crazy to me. Every day somebody asks me how I do my stance. Bring it up, hands up. Basically, I, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Ricky probably had the coolest stance. Ricky feel good. Yeah, Ricky feel real good right about now. And Ricky got you. You know, Ricky. You have to be a little bit cocky up there. You know, like a Bruce Lee movie. You know, he used to go, ah! boom. There are guys, I guess, Jeff Field, one of those guys that have the bat moving in this action. You all seen Jim Tomey hold the bat out. You've seen Ryan Howard, same thing, holds the bat out, brings it back where the stare came from. I wasn't doing it for intimidation as much as I was doing it for being serious. I was so relaxed, it was just like I was just like a lion, like inviting him to come into my den. And then when he get ready, I would strike like a snake. No, I never changed my stand. I think when I was in my mother's womb, I was hitting like that. You don't go into game one of the World Series worrying about is my stance right? No. Your stance is what got you there. How many times did I change my stance? The man of a thousand stances. I don't think we have enough time to go through all of one's cow head. I just started flicking my bat this way and laying it down, you know, kind of opening in my stride just a little bit so I could see it a little bit earlier. When Brad commenced, caught the ball and fell over the wall. I think I was a little bit more upright. He gave me this one day. How am I looking? <laughs> My all-time favorite of cows was what we called the uh, violin. Because he was doing this up like this. His violin, isn't it? He won the MVP in 1983, pretty much like this. And he won the MVP in 1991, pretty much like this. That'll be a little bit of tribute. The stance is only a starting point. I mean, all the different starting points, the one consistent part was my swing. In heating, it's how you feel at the plate. Guys, you can stand on the plate like this. If it helps you hit, do it. As long as I'm hitting good, it's not gonna bother me, but uh, start hitting bad, we might have a new stance.
very nice. That's how it's done.